peer-to-peer -peer learning are unique with a great faculty led by John Peters from a chair, association of MBAs and ex-prisoner of war, delivering actionable insights for you to navigate uncertainties and thrive. Paid 3 million 155,250 Naira by March 15th for your spot and enrich your leadership skills in resilience, innovation and sustainable growth. Apply now via plus 44-7425-883-791 or exec at texm.co.uk. It's a strategic opportunity to win. Texm, insights that inspire, actions that change the world. journey with you to overcome looming challenges with our flexible payment plans and affordable product offerings. Stand your ground. Become a homeowner today. Subscribe to Adron Homes. Building cities, communities, and homes. From Lagos, the nation's commercial capital, this is the News at 10. Live from Channels Television, reporting tonight, I'm Mwawodo. Welcome tonight. Federal government moves to revolutionize the nation's trade. The president inaugurates chairing committee to implement the national single window project, among other things, fast track cargo clearance at the ports. International Monetary Fund IMF upgrades Nigeria's growth forecast to 3.3 percent from 3.2 in 2024. The ongoing spring meetings in Washington, D.C. We have our correspondent there to bring us up to speed with a global dialogue. And federal government unveils 2024 annual flood outlook as parts of the 148 local government areas in 31 states of the Federation at risk of high flood. On business news tonight, Nigeria's foreign exchange reserves shrink by nearly $2 billion within one month, marking the lowest level in over six years. On sports news tonight, Olympic torch lead in a traditional ceremony for the Paris 2024 Games in Olympia, the birthplace of the ancient games. From Abuja, the nation's capital, members of the academic staff of Unity Colleges besieged the Ministry of Education in Abuja in protest over what they describe as non-payment of their three-year salary by the federal government. And in international news from London, Israel is calling for sanctions to be imposed on Iran's missile project after it launched an unprecedented attack on its territory. The federal government is ramping up measures towards placing the nation's trade activities on a new height. This comes as the president has inaugurated a steering committee for the implementation of the National Single Window Project. This initiative is aimed at providing a comprehensive trade facilitation system in Nigeria and ensuring faster cargo clearance at the nation's ports. As State House correspondent Empress Simon reports that President Bola Tinubu has described the project as a game changer. 
It's the president's first official engagement after the Eid al Fitr holidays, and his attention is on addressing the challenges within Niger's business environment. To ensure smooth trade facilitation in the country, the Tinibu administration initiated the National Single Window Project, which seeks to address the bottlenecks and corruption eminent in the country's trade system and to also facilitate the clearance of cargo at the ports. The president is here to inaugurate the Implementation Steering Committee comprising the Niger Customs Service, the Federal Ministry of Finance, and the Federal Inland Revenue Service, among other agencies. This initiative will serve as a catalyst for achieving an average GDP growth rate of 7% annually, propelling Nigeria to new heights of prosperity. Paperless trade alone is projected to bring an annual economic benefit of around 2.7 billion USD a testament to the transformative power of this initiative. The President Tinibu believes the policy will also enhance Niger's trade relations with other African countries while also boosting revenue generation. We cannot afford to lose an estimated four billion in US dollars annually to red tape, bureaucracy, delays and corruption at our ports. The national single window we are there this issues headlong, preventing revenue leakage and facilitating effective trade by doing so, we will create a more transparent, secure and business-friendly environment that will attract investment and spur economic growth. From the council chamber, Members of the committee brief State House correspondents at the press gallery where the Controller General of the Niger Customs Service highlights steps being taken towards the reopening of Niger's land borders. In terms of opening the, the, the land borders, consultations are already in progress, some of them at very high level. Uh, over the last weekend, I, was, uh, I had an interaction with my colleagues in the Benin Republic. Earlier, I had gone to our borders in the Niger Republic. We are looking at the issues that led to the closures of the border in the first instance. The president urges members of the Implementation Steering Committee to bring their expertise to bear in charting a new landscape for Nigeria's trade environment. From the presidential villa, Emperor Simon, Channels, Television News. And outside the shores of Nigeria, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, reviewed its projection of economic growth for Nigeria for the year 2024 to 3.3%, coming up from the earlier projection of 3.2%. Speaking during the release of the World Economic Outlook on the ongoing IMF and World Bank Spring meetings in Washington, D.C., the director of the research department of the fund, Pierre Olivier, also projected a downward trend in the nation's inflation rate to 23% later in the year and 18% in 2026. Our correspondent Sarah Achimogo reports from Washington, D.C. To commence the spring meeting, officials of the International Monetary Fund are briefing journalists on the World Economic Outlook. He's the economic counselor and the director. First, the officials take a look at how developed economies are faring under the current economic climate vis-a-vis -vis the impact on developing countries such as Nigeria. You know, having a hard time sort of... At the end, they make recommendations on how to get it right going forward. Inflation continues to come down. Median inflation will decline from 4% at the end of last year to 2.8% by the end of this year and 2.4% at the end of 2025. And most indicators continue to point to a soft landing. Now, resilient growth and rapid disinflation are consistent with favorable supply developments, including the fading of energy price shocks and a striking rebound in labor supply, supported by strong immigration in many advanced economies. It's then time for question and answers. For Nigeria, the IMF appreciates recent interventions by the government, which it says will bring down inflation. Growth in Nigeria, steady, but actually rising this year, from 2.9% last year to 3.3% this year. Uh, we've seen uh, an expansion from the recovery in the oil 
sector with a better security situation and also improved agriculture. Uh, benefiting from the better weather conditions and the introduction of dry season farming. Uh, so there's a, a broad-based increase also in the uh, financial sector and the IT sector. Uh, inflation, yes, it, uh, it has increased. Uh, part of this reflects the, the reforms, the exchange rate, um, and it's passed through into other uh, goods, from imports to other goods. So this explains also why we revised up our inflation projection for this year to 26%. At another meeting tagged Understanding Sovereign Debt in Africa, IMF is advocating a legal and legislative framework that will compel governments in the African region to be transparent with their debt data. It has shown real leadership. On Monday, the National Bureau of Statistics puts the nation's inflation rate for March at 33.2 percent. However, the International Monetary Fund is seeing a decline in the rates later in the year. This is just as the fund expresses confidence that fiscal and monetary policies are expected to impact the life of the people soon. From Washington, D.C., Sarah Chimugu, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, with the kickoff of the IMF and the World Bank meetings in Washington, D.C., debt and climate finance is back on the agenda. Nigeria's delegation is being led by the Minister of Finance, Mr. Wale Edu, and earlier he spoke with our London correspondent, Juliana Olainka, about what to expect in the coming days. Nigeria has to be at the table. Nigeria has to have its voice heard as a as an important country, not just in Africa, but in the world, given the size, the uh, population, the resource endowment of the country, and of course, um, it is uh, one of the largest democracies in the world, which is a, also a very important factor. It gives us an opportunity on the world stage, in front of the most important uh, financial decision makers, and of course, the whole world is watching, the private sector in particular is, uh, takes their signals from some of the conversations that go on. And it's an opportunity to uh, showcase uh, the achievements of the macroeconomic reform process of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. It's an op opportunity to um, say what has been done so far and also to indicate the direction of travel in which we are going and give people an indication of um, where things are likely to go next. And of course, although it's early days yet, it is a success story in the sense that um, the president set out, first of all, to stabilize the economy that he met, which was one, as we know, that was uh, uh, very lopsided. It was one that uh, the financial situation was unsustainable. The fuel subsidy spending uh, generally was um, way out of line with the revenues. And as we have seen, particularly in terms of uh, what the central bank has done in stabilizing the exchange rate, uh, um, together with uh, the help of the rest of the economic team, the security uh, um, network also came in to play an important role in removing uh, some of the uh, wrongdoing and some of the illegality that also uh, was, was putting pressure on the exchange rate. And of course, on the fiscal side, uh, on the government side, on the government revenue spending, uh, uh, um, uh, spending side, we took a leaf from what Central Bank indicated and have helped to um, raise interest rates to a level where we've been able to attract foreign exchange liquidity that has stabilized the foreign exchange uh, rate, or in fact reversed its free fall is the best way to put it. 
In other stories now, the Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, Professor Joseph Utsev, says that part of the 148 local government areas in 31 states of the Federation fall within the high flood risk areas. He said this during the public presentation of the 2024 annual flood outlook for Nigeria by the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency in Abuja. Meanwhile, at the separate events, the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Mr. Babaka Kiari, asked farmers across the country to take advantage of the seasonal prediction of the Nigeria Meteorological Agency to increase agricultural produce in the country. This is a presentation of the 2024 annual flood outlook by the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency with the theme promoting the use of data analytics and modeling for flood risk assessments and food security. In attendance is the Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation and the Minister of State, Directors General of NIMIT, Nigeria Hydrological Aid Services Agency, amongst others. The main purpose of the meeting is the unveiling of the states prone to flooding and possible preventions. The focus is rather on prevention and mitigation of possible flood disasters through increasing its visibility on the part of the populace and advocating that they take appropriate preventive, adaptive and mitigative measures in, in, and encouraging the citizens to comply with environmental guidelines and uh, town planning regulations. The high flood risk states are Adamawa, Akwaibom, Anambra, Bolchi, Bielsa, Benwe, Bornu, Cross River, Delta, Eboi, Edo, Imo, Jigawa, Kaduna, Kanu, Katsina, Kebi, Kogi, Kwara, Lagos, Nasarawa, Niger, Ogun, Ondo, Oshun, Oyo, Plateau, Rivers, Sokoto, Taraba, and Yobe states. Letters and annual flood outlook publications with maps have been dispatched to the governors, while the exact local governments to be affected in each state and the expected level of flood are detailed out accordingly. Meanwhile, the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Mr. Abubakar Kiari, is urging farmers across the country to take advantage of the seasonal predictions. Regrettably, there have been farming seasons in Nigeria when farmers did not take advantage of the institutional advice from NIMIT and on their own misread the rainfall pattern only to face dry spells that invariably ruin their crops and livelihoods. For all intents and purposes, the federal government is using this platform to provide early flooding warning information to the generality of Nigerians to mitigate the impact of the floods. In part two after the break, Governor Diko Rada of Katsina State vows continued onslaughts against terrorists in the state. The state's task force committee clamps down on petrol stations for allegedly selling fuel to insurgents. Please stay with us. My name is, is Francois Temele. I'm in charge of Arandos business. I oversee Arandos business in Sub-Saharan Africa. Africa has been a market where we have been trying to get into for quite some time. And, and also, we also feel that I think Africa is also very future. So therefore, by, by being there, it will help us be connect, I think, with many shareholders, right? And also particularly labs, now, and also um, lab technician. And we feel that being there is the opportunity for us to be able to get, I mean, to be able to promote our product and also, you know, sell more in the market. West Africa, particularly, being in Nigeria is such an amazing opportunity to be able to promote our product. The Duchess International Hospital caters to every aspect of a family's health needs. A one-stop shop for maternity and child health services, emergency medicine and critical care, medical and surgical subspecialties, dental and eye care, and a range of other subspecialties and services, all available at a single location right here in the heart of Kedja. 
And it really doesn't matter if you're paying out of pocket using your HMO or private insurance. We focus completely on providing that world-class affordable healthcare for all the family at all times. like to chop better food. Food where they make body tranga and vegetables where fresh like see tomorrow not day. We want to make the chocolate sweet the way we go like them. No cubes. Let it be the secret. Then make them with correct ingredients like chicken, parsley, garlic, plenty iron corn full and palm to make your chocolate palm bra for you. Come the sweet well well. Let it be the cocoa. Make we carry salute. Throw away give law. Change your world by changing what in your plate. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10, coming to you live on Channels Television from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. The federal government moves to revolutionize the nation's trade. The president inaugurates committee to implement the national single window project to, among other things, fast track cargo clearance at the ports. International Monetary Fund IMF upgrades Nigeria's growth forecast to 3.3% from 3.2% in 2024. At the ongoing spring meetings in Washington, we have our correspondent there bringing us up to speed with a global dialogue. A federal government unveils 2024 annual flood outlooks as parts of 148 local government areas in 31 states of the Federation at risk of high flood. Israel is calling for sanctions to be imposed on Iran's missile project after it launched an unprecedented attack on its territory. Turn our attention to security matters. The governor, Diko Rada of Katsina State, has pledged to continue to support the conventional security agencies in the state on their onslaught against terrorists. The governor made this commitment during a launch of 10 armored personnel vehicles for the joint operations across the eight frontline local government areas of Katsina State. He explained that the last seven months, a lot has been achieved since the beginning of the joint operation by the police, the army, and the community watch call. I have uh, walked the talk uh, by providing all the necessary equipments needed to Katsina community watch as well as the joint operation led by the police. You know, this insecurity issue it's an issue that we have inherited and as an issue that has come and become a hot banner during our campaign uh, activities. And uh, we have promised the people of Katna State of our willingness to provide all the necessary skills, tactics and strategies to provide the necessary security in our place. And uh, we thank God the Katana Community Watch has been in operation for about uh, seven months now. And uh, we were very thankful to Almighty Allah to the achievements so far recorded. We cannot claim a total elimination of banditry and criminality in my state, but we want to assure people that a lot has been achieved from the beginning of the operation, a joint operation between the Katana Community Watch and the Nigerian police with the military. In fact, a lot of things have been achieved, but we are still having challenges in some of these frontline local governments. While at least 10 suspects have been arrested by the Katsina State Task Force Committee on Food Security for allegedly selling fuel to insurgents in the forest. In an operation conducted across various fuel stations in the state capital, the chairman of the task force, Jabiru Tsuari, said that three petrol stations have so far been sealed and culprits have been apprehended. He says this is part of the government's determination to eradicate insurgents and their collaborators across the state. 
Meanwhile, lawmakers from the People's Democratic Party in the House of Representatives say that they are giving a three-month ultimatum to President Tinubu administration to address the security situation in the country. The lawmakers, led by the minority leader of the House of Representatives, Kingsley Chinda, reached this resolution after a closed-door meeting at the National Assembly. Meanwhile, the caucus insists the PDP in the House of Representatives remains united, despite calls by some other PDP lawmakers for the resignation of the acting national chairman of the party. The government is therefore called upon to immediately take steps to ensure that the security situation in the country is normalized. And the caucus has also given three months ultimatum for government to normalize the security situation in our country. After three months, the caucus will take further steps to sensitize and mobilize Nigerians to perhaps take their security into their hands. The House of Representatives caucus also agreed to call on all party caucuses, the Board of Trustees, National Executive Committee, and the National Working Committee of the party to embark on reconciliatory measures with the view to resolve all litigations that are pending and that has hindered the party in any way whatsoever from having a substantive national chairman. We call on our leaders, leaders of the People's Democratic Party, to continue to demonstrate unconditional loyalty to the party and ensure that the party is moved to her pride of place where she enjoyed the position of the largest party in Africa and to take back the Aso Villa, which is actually supposed to be our birthright. Away from security matters now, people of Okuta, Ibeku community in Umwahia, north local government area of Abia State, have staged a peaceful protest over the death of their kinsman, an Air Force cadet, Emmanuel Onyemereche, who allegedly drowned in a swimming pool at Damgreet Hotel last week Tuesday. Carrying placards with different inscriptions, the protesters comprising men, women and youths gathered at the government house in Umwahia's front gate after marching through the busy streets. Their grief protesters are appealing to Governor Alex Oti to grant them justice by ensuring the matter is not swept under the carpet. The special advisor to the governor on security expressed concern over the sad incident, assuring the people that investigation will be thoroughly carried out to unravel the circumstances. We are here today to make known to the government over the death of our brother, who is an Air Force officer, to be decorated by July this year. The information we got last week was that he came around during Easter period to pay his family a visit. And on Tuesday last week, a friend took him to damn great hotels where we got information that he was drowned in the pool. And we are here to present our grievances to the government. We are not here for violence, but we are here to make the government know that we want justice to prevail. That's why we are calling on the government, uh, the governor of the state, His Excellency Alex Oti, to stand and make sure that every possibility must be done for pre justice to be prevail. We have listened to your complaints and we will take measures to brief His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Abia State, on the matter. Whatever has happened, has happened. We leave it for God, but investigations will be carried out to ensure that if there were perpetrators of this act, it will be unraveled and justice will be seen to be done. We have more for you on the news at 10 as we head over to our Buja studios now where Gloria Umezoke is standing by to give us more. Hello, Gloria. 
Many thanks, Anne. We're here in Abuja, we turn attention now to education matters. The academic staff of Unity Colleges across the country are protesting what they claim is the non-payment of three-year salary owed by the federal government. The teachers who besieged the Federal Ministry of Education in Abuja are demanding an expeditious look into their predicament and prompt resolution of the matter. Our correspondent, Benny Ark, reports. <laughs> This gathering at the gates of the Ministry of Education comprises academic staff from the 110 unity schools across the country. The teacher says they are here to protest the non-payment of the three-year salary arrears owed by the federal government. major reason for being here was as a result of the interview our Honorable Minister, Professor Tari Maman, had on Channels TV, where he was asked uh, as regards our salary arrears, and he noted that um, he wasn't aware. So we came today to actually inform him. The Minister of State for Education, Mr. Yusuf Sununu, came out to address the disgruntled teachers. And we have agreed and concluded today is going to be a meeting day whereby we are going to listen to you, get to know all the problems, and then we set a machinery to address the issues. But unfortunately, while we are in our office, waiting for the leadership to come so that we can have a very good potential discussion that will resolve your problems, the next thing we had, it was there was demonstration outside the uh, ministry. It then called for a closed meeting with the elected representatives of the protesting teachers. The police allowed us to sit down with their leadership. Let them make our present their presentation. We tell them the way forward we are going to follow. And we set a motion to ensure that all issues are addressed. Coming out of the closed door meeting with the minister and various stakeholders, a representative of the teachers speaks on the outcome. The meeting was a fruitful one, and uh, resolutions from the meeting states categorically that um, between now and uh, uh, next week, a committee will be set up for a meeting that will give us a time frame uh, when this uh, process will be concluded comprehensively. So we are happy to note and we want to thank our Honorable Minister for State and our Honorable Minister of Education for giving us audience and for responding to our cry as well as the Permanent Secretary of Education and the other directors. We want to thank them for giving us a listening ear, responding to our cries and giving us a time frame. The group says its members are optimistic that there will be a performance of the agreement and recommendations this time around. Benny Hawk, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, in Anambra State, Governor Chukuma Soludo has distributed 2,000 brand new laptops to primary school head teachers and principals of public schools across the state. Governor Soludo, who made the presentation at the International Conference Center, OCA, explained that the distribution aligns perfectly with his vision of ensuring the full digitization of all sectors of the state economy, as well as prioritizing teaching and teachers in the state. The Anambra State International Convention Center comes alive with the presence of head teachers and principals of public schools in the state for the distribution of laptops procured by the state government for them. The laptop distribution has positive implications, as the chairman of the Anambra State Universal Basic Education Board says the project is to bring about a digital revolution in the education sector, while the chairman of the Post-Primary Schools Service Commission notes that it's a promise kept by the governor. The State Commissioner for Education points out the governor's interest in the quality of education in the state. He is particularly concerned about the quality of teachers and the quality of teaching in Anambra State. And he went to this three-tier examination through which 5,000 teachers and 
An excited Governor Saludo appreciates the teachers and school administrators for the good work they are doing and assures of making the education sector a priority in the state. We prioritize you know, our education. We prioritize our future. And that's why we're putting in the resources that we're doing, but we're upgrading several of our schools to become smart schools. Unveiling the laptops for onward distribution, the governor announces the launch of free public Wi-Fi in some strategic places, which will be scaled up to schools to begin smart education and the creation of the digital tribe. Our goal is to create the digital tribe, and it all begins now. Thank you very much for the glory of God. We are one day's new district. Please, a round of applause. Put your hands together. The high point of the ceremony was the distribution of the laptops to head teachers and principals, as well as solidarity chants by the beneficiaries, as hopes are high in anticipation of the effects this new input will bring to the state. Well, still ahead on the news at 10, Nigeria's foreign exchange reserves shrink by nearly $2 billion within one month, marking the lowest level in over six years. That's in business news. Let's join us again. Do you know that you can now print all your essential items for events without even having to leave your home? It's the Cast Print Combo Deal for all events. Yes! Weddings, conferences, birthdays, burials, etc. Starting from 495,000 Naira only, you get 50 invites, 50 A2 size posters, 50 16 page brochures, one large backdrop banner, one roll up banner, 50 jotters with pens, and 50 souvenir carrier bags. Whatever event you're planning, we can adjust to your budget and quantities. Just send your pictures and other information through WhatsApp, and we shall send a design for your approval. Approve your design, and we will produce with super high quality digital print technology. We can even arrange delivery to your location. Call us now on 0913 1565. 0816 or 0812 794 9323 or visit our social media pages. Cast Prints, digital printing at super speed. Are you ready to unlock the future of healthcare? Join us at Medic West Africa, the premier medical exhibition happening at the Landmark Center in Lagos from 17th to 19th. April 2024, with over 6,000 plus attendees, 180 plus exhibitors, 32 countries represented, eight product categories, three conferences. Medic West is more than just an exhibition, it's a platform for innovation, collaboration, and learning. Don't miss your chance to connect with decision makers and professionals from various regions all coming together over three days to shape the future of healthcare. Mark your calendars for April 17th to 19th, 2024. Welcome back. You're still watching the news at 10, coming to you live on Channels Television. Away from education, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Ms. Danyesum Wike, says the upkeep and sanitation of satellite towns in the FCT is a major fraud in the system because the areas are mostly abandoned. Mr. Wike said this during the inauguration of the coordinator of the Satellite Town Developments Department, Mr. Abdul Kadir Zulukarfi, at his office in Abuja. He warned the newly inaugurated coordinator against sabotage of the key performance indicators of his administration. In the cleaning of the satellite town, let me just say clearly, that's an area of fraud. That's where there's a lot of fraud. Because you don't even know whether they are cleaning the place at the end of the month, they put in a paper to pay. Now you are coming here and connecting, so you make sure this is done very well before you send me any paper. So many people to me things happen.
happen. People want to make money without doing the work. If you do the work, nobody is worried. But when the work is not done, then every time you want to, you want to have this money, please. it's not going to work that way. Uh, this government's priority to make sure that all the satellite towns get a pact of government. As we are going, as we are doing now, um, right away, there's a lot of projects going on in the satellite uh, towns. It is their business to coordinate and layers and briefly the word emphasis mm -hmm. and brief me mm -hmm. as the minister. They are not sent there to your city in your office and begin to negotiate with contractors. If I find out that, I will not hesitate to take necessary action. More stories now. The president has declared April the 7th of every year as National Police Day. President Bola Tinubu made the declaration through the Vice President Kashim Shatima at the Mading Award and Commendations event organized by the Nigeria Police Force. He says the current administration is determined to reform the Nigeria Police Force in line with the president's renewed hope agenda of ensuring the security of lives and property of citizens. Please, we want to invite the chaplain. Excellent service, gallantry efforts, self-sacrifice. These virtues are what the Nigeria Police Force is celebrating at this Maiden Police Award and Commendations event in Abuja. Especially all of the heads of the other agents. Vice President Kashim Shatima represents President Bola Tinibu at the occasion. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. Prominent Nigerians, including the President of the Senate, Senator Godswill Akpabio, are also in attendance. Men and officers of the Niger police are often criticized for their alleged unprofessional conduct. But tonight, its leadership says there are still officers who are holding the flag of the force I up. This ceremony serves as a pregnant reminder that the efforts of our officers are both seen and valued. Let this also serve as reassurance that the leadership of the force is deeply committed to the well-being of all members of the force as well as improved service delivery. While commending the Niger police for its role in maintaining law and order, guests, however, urged the force to pay more attention to the welfare of its personnel and ensure those found to be complicit in discharging their duties are punished. As we honor the good officers, let us weed out the bad officers amongst you because the chain is as strong as its weakest link. The awards caught across various areas of policing, such as the Police Command Commissioner of the Year, Investigator of the Year, Police Public Relations Officer of the Year, Crime and Cybercrime Bursters of the Year, among others. Commissioner of Police, River State Command, CP, Olatunji Rewan Disu. Posthumous awards and funds are also presented to families of those who died in the line of duty. Back home with the sum of one million naira each of the families. Please put your hands together for him. Police officer of the year goes to the DPL of the year. Then comes the award for the police officer of the year. It takes into consideration operational efficiency, integrity, release be Shabali. When it's time for his remarks, Vice President Kashim Shatima makes no delay in unfolding President Bola Tinibu's plan towards reforming the Niger police. We are upgrading your equipment and technology to enhance operational effectiveness and efficiency. This includes acquiring people purpose equipment, weapons, ammunition, and armored carriers to provide cover and protection for officers in combat situations. The 7th of April is hereby declared National Police Day in Nigeria. Well, that's it from the nation's capital. It's back to you, Anne, for more on the News at 10. Thank you, Gloria.
Over 300,000 kilograms of 40,000 liters of illicit substances seized from various parts of Lagos and Ogun states have been destroyed by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, the NDLEA. The heap of illicit substances was publicly set ablaze at the Bagadagri area of Lagos in the presence of the chairman and chief executive officer of the agency, Brigadier General Mohamed Bouba Marwa, and other top officials of the agency. Brigadier General Marwa said the open destruction of the seized illicit drugs followed court orders as he called for more public support for ongoing efforts by the NDLEA and other stakeholders to curb the menace of substance abuse and illicit drug trafficking in Nigeria. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority has suspended the permit for non-commercial flights of three operators in a bid to sanitize the general aviation sector. And this is coming on the heels of an earlier warning from the NCAA to holders of the PNCF against the engaging of carriage of passenger cargo or mail for hire and reward. According to the acting director general of the NCAA, the three private operators suspended are in violation of the annexure provision of their PNCF and Part 9114 of the Nigeria Civil Aviation Regulations 2023. Back in November 2023, the use of private jets for commercial purpose had uh, caught on the attention of the Honorable Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development, Festus Kiamo Sam who issued marching orders for the cessation of such acts. Subsequently, in March 2024, the NCA had issued a stern warning to holders of the permit for non-commercial flights, PNCF, against engaging the carriage of passengers, cargo, or mail for hire and reward. The authority had also deployed its official to monitor activities of private jet terminals across the airports in Nigeria. As a consequence of this heightened surveillance, no fewer than three private operators have been found to be in violation of the annexure provision of their PNCF and Part 9114 of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Regulations. In line with our zero tolerance for violation of regulations, the authority has suspended the PNCF of these operators. To further sanitize the general aviation sector, I have directed that a re-evaluation of fall holders of PNCF be carried out on or before the 19th of April 2024 to ascertain compliance with regulatory requirements. Africa's most awarded television network and Nigeria's leading broadcaster channels television is partnering Wildlife Africa Fund, an international environmental non-profit inspiring the protection of Africa's wildlife and wild spaces to spread awareness of wildlife conservation and tackle illegal wildlife trade. A joint statement by the two organizations explains that the new partnership will take on the challenge of popularizing the protection of Nigeria's wildlife and forest, inspiring millions of Nigerians to learn more about the environment and encourage them to protect the country's natural heritage for future generations. In the statements, the chairman and CEO of Channels Media Group, Dr. John Momo, described the partnership as one that underscores the commitment of both parties to preserving Nigeria's rich natural heritage. To give effect to this alliance, Channels Television and Wild Africa Fund will collaborate to publicize wildlife-focused content, such as 30-second public service announcements featuring influential Nigerians in various fields. Under this partnership, Wild Africa Fund and Channels Television will work to expand the coverage of its award-winning weekly environment show, Earth File. Both organizations will also support a network of local journalists who will constantly produce in-depth reporting on the environment and also introduce conservation-focused media training to improve the capacity of Nigerian journalists at Af Nigeria's foremost media training institute, which is the Channels Academy. Let's delve into the world of business. Willie Bong is standing by. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. <laughs>
Thank you, Anne, and welcome to Business News. Nigeria's Forex Reserves have taken a sharp hit, dropping by about $1.84 billion in just 26 days as the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, intensifies efforts to stabilize the Naira. As at April the 12th, data from the CBN reveals reserves standing at $32.61 billion, a significant decline from the $34.45 billion recorded on March the 18th this year. Analysts believe the decline can be attributed to CBN's active interventions in the FX market to bolster the Naira. This downturn marks the lowest reserves level since September 29, 2017, when reserves were at $32.49 billion. Now, Stambik IBTC is hoping to raise 350 billion Naira infrastructure fund through the Securities and Exchange Commission to support its customers in their desire to upscale investment and solve the problem in the power and energy sectors. The chief executive officer of the bank, Demala Shogunle, discloses during the Stambik IBTC energy and infrastructure breakfast session in Lagos. The gathering seeks to stimulate real thought and spur action towards a more sustainable and efficient future in Nigeria's energy and infrastructure domain. Despite having one of the largest crude oil and gas reserves in the world, Nigeria's average daily crude oil production is below expectation and domestic power supply continues to face challenges such as inadequate generation capacity, inadequate and aging transmission and distribution infrastructure. It is against this backdrop that the Stambik IBTC Energy and Infrastructure Breakfast Session is convened. While identifying microeconomic issues affecting the industry, the keynote speakers offer strategies for meeting Nigeria's energy demand in 2024 and beyond. There's no point people sitting on assets if they don't have the capacity or the will to make them work. These assets should be given to people who have the capacity who have the will, who have the financial resources to produce them. What the country has as the only viable option to bridge the electricity gap is through distributed generation, distributed access. For Stambik IBGC, the Infrastructure Fund program is one of its contributions towards solving the problem of power and energy. We've already gone back to the Securities and Exchange Commission for Stambic IBTC Infrastructure Fund 2. Do you know the size? 350 billion naira. Why are we running up and down? Is to be able to solve these challenges on behalf of our customers so that Nigeria can grow. One of the participants explains the role of technology in optimizing and enhancing operations in the energy sector. Because of the various requirements to drill the well, uh, to measure the properties of the, of the formation that would determine what kind of oil or gas that we have, the process of extracting that, bringing it to surface, all of the pipelines, you need technology al along that. We all know um, that one of the biggest challenges this country has is power, energy, okay? And organizing sessions like this is our little contribution towards bridging that gap. The Stambik IBTC Energy and Infrastructure Breakfast Session is the second in the series. The gathering also aims to foster new business relationships, facilitate networking opportunities, and build a vibrant community of professionals within the value chain. Now, still in the energy space, Dangote Petroleum Refinery has slashed the price of diesel from 1,200 to 1,000 naira per litre, following a 30% reduction just three weeks ago. The move aims to alleviate economic strain and tackle high inflation rates in Nigeria, promising widespread benefits across industries. This bold initiative underscores the refinery's commitment to driving positive economic change, offering relief to businesses and consumers alike. Now, it's still bleeding at the NGX as the equities market benchmark index loses a crucial level in today's trading session. Dominique Iwiu tells us more. Hello, and welcome to the Stock Market Report. I'm Dominic Iwiu. 
It's another day and another red close for the local boss as profit taking intensifies with the all share index hanging by a thread over the 100,000 points, further declining by 1.04%, with a market capitalization of 56.96 trillion naira. The banking counter is down again by over 5%, while the consumer goods fell further by 1.02%. And the oil and gas sector remains unchanged. Most sectors that we track are still down. So the second trading day of the week and the market sustains negative trend just three days left for the week. Let's hope the bull makes an appearance. But for today, it is bearish. <laughs>
Images online show swathes of farmland engulfed by rainwater. Flash floods have also disrupted power supplies and transportation networks. Pakistan has experienced an increase in extreme weather events as it grapples with the impacts of climate change. A colossal amount of water is moving towards the Russian city of Kurgan, the region's governor has said. Vadim Shumkov said that the swollen Tobol River and its tributaries had produced water levels twice those of the last major flood in 1994. Floods over the past two weeks have forced evacuations of tens of thousands of people from northern Kazakhstan and bordering areas of Russia. Waters are expected to rise as high as 36 feet above normal. Myanmar resistance fighters have burned the flag used by the military government and raised their own banner at a newly captured army base as a senior rebel commander vowed they would hold the strategic area near the Thai border. The celebrations by fighters linked to the armed ethnic Karen National Union came less than a week after the capture of Miawadi, a key trading town on Thailand's western border. And a scuffle erupted in Georgia's parliament as the leader of the opposition punched an MP. <laughs> MP Mamuka Umdinadze was speaking when opposition leader Aleko Elisashvili punched him during a debate over a controversial law. <laughs> there was then a melee involving dozens of lawmakers. Critics say the foreign influence bill is inspired by authoritarian laws neighboring Russia uses to crush dissent. <laughs> Thousands of protesters demonstrated in the Georgian capital Tbilisi on Monday, demanding the withdrawal of the bill. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos. Thanks, Simon. Sports is now the touch relay for the Paris 2024 Olympics has set off from Olympia, the birthplace of the ancient games after the flame was lit in a ritual inspired by antiquity and marked by messages of hope amid multiple global crises. The lighting of the flame is not only related to the Olympic Games, it is also re it represents a peace, truths, different cultures and the spirit of the Olympic Games. The first touch bearer 2020 Olympic run champion Stefanos and Toscos earlier today passed the flame to France's first touch bearer in Olympia, retired French swimmer Laura Manodo, who won her first gold medal at the 2004 Athens Olympics. Let's bring you up to speed now with results from March Day 30 of the Nigeria Premier Football League. Uh, played earlier today, league leaders Rangers International urged Abia Warriors 3-2 to stay top of the league on 54 points after 30 games. They are closely followed by defending champions Ayimba who beat Heartland 1-0 in Aba. So just three points separate Rangers and Ayimba. In other games, Bendel Insurance uh, came from a goal down to beat Kanu Pillars 2-1 in Benin City. Kwa United recorded the only away win of the day while Sporting Lagos, Aqua United and Rivers United all enjoyed home victories. And that's what's tonight. It's back to Anne. Thank you, Kelly. And the main news again. The federal government today moved to revolutionize the nation's trade as President Bola Tinubu inaugurated a committee to implement the National Single Window Project to, among other things, fast-track cargo clearance at the ports. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Mwawadu. Good night. governance is not enough. It has to be pro-people and proactive. Good governance is putting people 